Welcome back to Misunderstood. I'm Rachel Yucatel. So happy Thursday, everybody. I just wanted to start this episode by acknowledging the fact that um, the world is feeling very heavy at the moment. Um, and I didn't want to not say anything. Um, but you know, it's hard to find the right words, um, for anybody, I think, but, you know, I just wanted to acknowledge that what's going on in the world, um, is on my mind. It's on everyone's mind. And, you know, I, I, I hesitated until now to say anything, um, about, it because I just felt like, you know, why would I share my opinion? It doesn't really matter. But the reason why it does matter is because I have been through something similar. I lost my fiance to terrorist. Um, he was killed by terrorists. And um, I know what it feels like to lose someone. I know what it feels like to be scared. Um, I know what it feels like to hurt and, um, just be so frightened of what the future holds and what is currently unfolding. And that unknown feeling um, is ever consuming. And for the people that are actually going through that and have um, loved ones who um, they don't know where they are right now, that is the worst feeling in the world. I can attest to that. And, um, you know, I just, I want to say that my heart is with everybody and my thoughts are as well. And I just wanted to take a moment um, to acknowledge what is going on um, because, you know, as we all move on through everyday life and do the things we normally do and put out content like this, um, sometimes it doesn't feel like we are paying attention to the tone of the world. And I just want you to know that I am and I'm there. Um. So anyways, I also wanted to thank everybody to, for listening continuously to my podcast. It means so much to me. You know, I book every guest myself. I don't have a booker. Um, I, I chase guests. You know, I find a topic that means something to me and I go after that person personally. I try not to go through their PR person because, you know, that never works. I try and have a personal connection with them. And um, I take this very seriously. I take my guests very seriously. I want them to have a platform to be able to tell their story. Um, or talk about a topic that needs to be reconsidered. And I love that you stay with me every week. And if you've missed some episodes, I know that people have told me privately on DMs that they go back and listen to them. Um, every guest is so different and we will continue to bring you that kind of content um, in the future. And I'm always open to listening to suggestions of people that you want to hear from people think you are who you think miss are, un, are misunderstood. That's always helpful for me too to know who you want to hear from. Um, and I also wanted to mention, it is so helpful that if you are watching, um, to subscribe to the YouTube channel, um, comments, we always appreciate them. I do read everyone. And also, um, if you are listening on your podcast, if you could give us five stars, if you like the episode and leave a review, it is helpful for the algorithm, but not only that it's helpful for when people are checking out what this podcast is about, they know that there's some credible content, um, in it. So, I just wanted to, you know, kind of run down the headlines of that for, for right now. And now let's talk about who's going to be on today. Um, so if you have been watching Southern Charm, or if you know of it, then you know all the characters in place. Um, Shep Rose is my guest today. I'm really excited to have him. I've known Shep since before he got on Southern Charm and before he was famous. And I will say that I can attest to the fact that he is the same person he was when he was not famous as he is now. And I think that he's never pretended to be anyone else than himself. And that's why he gets away with a lot of things. He may not be the typical Prince Charming, but he is definitely very charming. We have watched today's guest charm his way out of just about everything in the last 10 years. Shep Rose's The Perfect Blend of Charisma and Snark has helped him make Southern Charm a must watch. This season, Shep is front and center when it comes to the drama. He gives us the scoop on the questionable timeline between Taylor and Austin and Olivia, and he opens up about the significance of his relationship with his ex and what he's looking for in the future. Kids, a trip to Saint-Tropez, another book, the world is his oyster. Shep shares his thoughts on Paige and Craig's long distance relationship, Whitney's travels, what cast member he would want to see come back, and how stand up comedy might just play a part in his future. 
Shep is never at a loss for words. Please take a listen to Shep Rose. Shepard, it's such an honor and a pleasure to have you back in my life. How are you, buddy? Good, Rachel. How are you? I'm great. So you and I know each other from before you even did the show. <laughs> I was wondering if you, like what your recollection is of how we, of our relationship and how we met. It was in Kansas City at a wedding at, uh, and you were someone's date and we just, we were I don't know. We just started laughing at you making fun of each other. And, and, uh, your date got like a little butt hurt, uh, if I remember correctly. And, uh, not, 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 I mean, he was just like, Hey man, she's my date, <laughs> which I understand by the way, I've definitely like had a date before. And my friends are like having a little too much fun laughing with my date. I'm like, guys, she's with me. <laughs> so, I, but, uh, I do remember hitting it off in a really fun way. Yeah, I think you were sitting next to me. I think you were their stag, right? I don't remember. Totally, right? totally. I would never go to Kansas City with a date. Okay. Right, right. <laughs> and I and I do remember though, um, you showing up at the pool with some other guy in like a, you were both in speedos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That we that's our move. That was our move at the time. Um, he's now married with kids and he's sober. <laughs> oh wow! Right. Well, yeah, I'm not, of, I, I went the other direction. I'm, right, I right. Still, and speaking of sober, I don't drink beer. And that was the first time it was like really cool at the time to ice someone. What was it where you had to get down on your knee and drink? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I That was sort of dorky, in my opinion. I don't like gimmicks. I, just give me the goddamn beer so I can drink it. Right. Well, you peer pressured me into doing it and I didn't know anyone there. I hardly knew the date I was on. And I so, don't, I categorically deny icing you, but okay. You did. You iced me. All right. It might you have been. Did. Well, I couldn't, I couldn't even drink it. I had never had beer before. I was a total wimp. And so, you know, it was dumb. But anyway, we, we had a great time. I also won $3,000 on the blackjack table at the hair at Harris uh, in in uh, outside of Kansas City. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. Well, so it was a great weekend for you. <laughs> that was okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. And then later on, we we kept in touch and you invited me. I can't really remember the details on how this happened, but I was with a girlfriend of mine, Trudy. She was visiting from um, San Francisco. Trudy. Yeah. And we met down. Um, we came down to visit you for the weekend and it was the weekend you were filming the pilot for Southern Charm. Do you remember that? I don't, was it the pilot? Yeah. I, I, I don't remember it. I definitely remember y'all being here. We had a great time. Yeah. We were up at that rooftop uh, mm -hmm. apartment and yeah. we we're carrying on and doing what we do. And uh, I don't, yeah. I it was the pilot, the pilot or the, it was used oh. as the first episode, whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah. It was early. It was yeah. definitely early. Yeah. And I remember, well, first of all, I met everyone and I thought everyone was so cool um, I hung out with, obviously everybody thought Craig was like the hottest thing they had ever seen. Right. So, but Craig, you know, he saved in my phone as Brooklyn because he told me the entire weekend, his name was Brooklyn. He never <laughs> even told me his name was Craig. So the first time I knew him as Craig was when the show came on. But I remember thinking at the end of the weekend, I said to Trudy, how is this show going to go anywhere? This was the most boring, nothing happened. It was the most boring. It was a fun weekend, but like nothing out of sorts. Right. So I was like, Oh, poor chef. Like they're not going to have a show. And here you are. Look at what they're able to do with uh, a little bit well, of editing. Uh, well, I think the show succeeded. Um, for the very facts of what you just said, um, we didn't have any expectations. We right. didn't know what the fuck we were doing. We were just, we were normal people from nice, normal families. And we did, we were like, I mean, at least I can speak for myself. I was just like, I'll try anything once. And yeah. I didn't think, I, I was like, this, this is going to go down in flames. I was with you. <laughs> I like, I didn't care. I, I was, but um, I think what's made it 
what made it successful, at least early on, was we're real. We were absolutely real. We were absolutely genuine. We didn't have any ulterior motives. We weren't trying to be actors or actresses or performers. We were just like trying to, and we were meeting each other kind of for the first time uh, and getting to know each other. And then you add in like uh, Thomas Ravenel and mm. and Whitney and and all these characters and me and Craig Brooklyn, so to speak. Yeah. Um. You just it was combustible. It was um a real testament to Whitney, uh, who put it all together. Whitney created the show, and mm-hmm. uh, he found us. He found a cast of uh, misfits, and uh, people started to pay attention. But what you say is so true because everyone was so authentic and real and no one, it didn't seem that people were like, oh yeah, I want to do the show because I want to push a product or I want to be famous. It really was a group of real people who were all very beautiful, but like they were all like so authentic and that's, you can still see that. And the same thing with knowing you from beforehand, you are the same person today yeah. as you yeah. were but you know at that wedding you know way before uh, someone was even talking to you about doing a show and that's what I love about you and I think that's why you succeeded probably even though you're not someone who has necessarily been represented in like you know the best of ways sometimes but people like have a soft spot for you they forgive you because you're funny you're authentic and you don't really you really don't have a mean bone in your body so you might not make the right decisions sometimes but it's like because you're learning as you go on and you guys kind of grew up on tv even though you were a little yeah, older when you started but like you you really have spent years on television figuring it out i was about to say that i i have definitely uh grown up a little bit. I mean, I was 33 when I started this shit mm-hmm. and now I'm 44. And, uh, I mean, I, by the way, like so glad I didn't start when I was 24 cause that would have been disastrous. Um, and you know, I, I do have a, like a newfound sympathy for, uh, child actors or anybody like that. Like what a mind fuck, you know? Um, yeah. But again, I mean, you know, I'm on a show on Bravo. It's not like I'm, uh, you know, a movie star or anything, but it's, it's super cool. Everyone's super nice and it, but it takes some getting used to, and I've definitely changed over the past 10 years, like a hundred percent. I've been through so many different and, and let me personally, as well as, you know, uh, tied to the show, I mean, and, and whatever you want to call fame or whatever, Like I've just been through different phases and now I'm at this really good place where I'm like very Zen and I'm Mm -hmm. just like, what a dream, what a wonderful dream life is and how lucky I am. And, you know, like say what you will about me. I don't care. It's like, I know, I think that there's this saying, um, character is what, or reputation is what others think of you. Character is what the people who know and love you think about you. And uh, I, I, think that, I think I did that wrong. I think that that's a, uh, but you get the gist of it. Like, yeah, I, know I don't give a fuck what anyone else thinks at this point, because you're right. I mean, look, I, I'm not trying to be combative, but um, I, I know who I am. I, I'm, I'm, I am a nice person. I want everyone to succeed. I don't root against anybody. If I've done something stupid, I'll, I'll admit to it. But um, yeah, I, I, I feel good about myself uh, most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. So how does it feel to get that kind of recognition um, from being on a Bravo show? You said you're not like a, an actor, but to some people, you're more famous than people in the movies, right? People on Bravo TV are, it's a different kind of fame. It's incredibly crazy and out there and everyone seems to know you. Right. So well, how does that feel when people come up to you? Well, look, I mean, it's a like the Bravo fans are like the most loyal fans in on the face of the earth. So a testament to them and testament to the channel for for creating this ecosystem that we all live in. And um, so I but Rachel, like, uh, you know, like I, I probably I definitely before I even got into the television business or what have you, like which I was not trying to do, <laughs> this completely fell in my lap. Um, I definitely probably looked at looked down my nose at reality TV or you know and you know like like art house movies and stuff. 
But what I found is entertainment helps people uh, go through things in life, like or whether it be just a simple commute. I, I talk to fans. They're like, I have a two hour commute. I have two kids. I work two jobs. And when I get home, I turn on your your show and it makes me forget about everything. And I've also heard people say my my mom was sick with cancer. We watched your show in the hospital and we laughed and we and we got and we just loved it. And it really helped us. I'm like, so I love hearing that. It really puts it in perspective. We if if I can help like get people's mind off their troubles for even two seconds. Like, wow, that's beautiful. I love that. I love that. So you were just talking before about how this all started for you. You did not want to kind of get into reality TV. And I know you said Whitney created this. So what was the process? Because I know for a lot of people, they have to go through all sorts of interview things. Tell me how you got into it. I was at a rooftop party at that same apartment that we were at. Oh but gosh. on the roof, and uh, at New Year's Eve, uh, 2012, I think, and I met Thomas Ravenel, or I, I knew Thomas Ravenel. Our families knew each other. I was like, "What's up, Thomas?" He's like, "He goes, you won't believe this, Shep. They're doing a show about Charleston, and uh, they want me to be in it." And I was like, "Okay, good for you, man. Congratulations." He goes, "I want you to meet the the creator. His name's Whitney. Whitney came over." We shook hands and he was like, what's going on, dude? I was like, nothing. He's like, and so we kind of started laughing and and hanging out and talking to this person, that person. He's like, you know, I'd like to talk to you about being on the show. I think you'd be a good fit. I was like, yeah, man, I'm I'm not really, I was working on something else. I was, and, uh, but I go, here's my card. And I had a business card that's at the time that said, go fuck yourself. (laughs) And I gave it to him. And he, and no number, no nothing, just go fuck yourself. And he laughed so hard and he goes, you have got to talk. I Let me buy you lunch tomorrow with my business partner. And uh, the rest is kind of history. We went and filmed um, a sizzle reel at my family's farm with a bunch of whiskey and oysters and steaks and shotguns. And uh, six months later, I get a call and, and it's, it's on. This episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. My schedule is always packed. I'm running from taping a podcast to a meeting to my daughter's school to maybe an event at night. And sometimes it's hard to make sure we get delicious, healthy meals. But with HelloFresh, you can choose from over 40 recipes every week to ensure creative, mouth-watering meals for you and your family. HelloFresh makes everything easier. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. They do all the shopping, portioning, prepping, and they even send step-by-step recipe cards with pictures so you can't even mess up if you tried. To top it off, they have quick and easy options, including their 15-minute meals. That's less time than it takes to get delivery, so it's a no-brainer for us. So I've been using Green Chef in the past which is now owned by HelloFresh. And with a wider array of meal plans to choose from, there's something for everyone. I love switching between the brands and now with my listeners can enjoy both brands at a discount with me. HelloFresh is so great. My daughter even likes it. She invites friends over, they open the box, they make a meal, they look at the recipe card and they pretend that they're in a restaurant. It's adorable and I'm not kidding. The food is unbelievable. So go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 understood and use code 50 understood for 50% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50 understood and use code 50 understood for 50% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Wow. That must have been unbelievable. Um, Well, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what to expect. And I had half of my friends and family telling me not to do it. I mean, they were like, are you fucking nuts? Right. I was going to ask you what they thought. They probably were like, absolutely not. Well, the deciding factor is my sweet mother. And she she said, she goes, son, you should have been on TV years ago. (laughs) Um, Well, that's pretty true. So I also remember meeting Corey, who was, to me, seemed like a really big part of the group back then. But he didn't really make it on there, right? Or was he a friend of? How did that work with Corey? Oh, the summer house. Or yeah. Summer house. yeah. Yeah. But he was uh, part of that group that weekend that I met with you. So sure, I thought sure. he was part of the cast. I, it, 
to my knowledge, it was like Craig and Corey and Craig, whatever, like shown, shown through. But I, I don't know, man. I don't make decisions like that, you know. But right. um, and yeah, my I and I remember thinking Cameron was the most beautiful girl I had ever seen. I was like in awe of her beauty. Yeah, she's amazing. I'm having lunch with her tomorrow. Oh, amazing. I haven't, I haven't I have seen to tell her, her forever. I haven't seen her in forever. We we talk on the phone periodically. And I was like, let's have lunch for our thank you for reminding me. <laughs> 12 30. Okay. Got it. Good. You'll have to uh please tell her I say hello. But is there a past cast member that you would love to see return? Um, you know, there was a girl, Jenna, in season one mm-hmm. who was really outrageous um and funny as all get out but when that camera turned on she was just she couldn't be herself and that's and that's um i that's something like i i can't describe to you um like it's not a skill necessarily it's just something that happens i've seen it happen to people that i really adore and i think are hysterical and they can't do it when, you know, when they need to kind of thing. Right. Right. And you were talking about Thomas before and what a big personality. Me myself, I mean, me, myself, I become, I, I like love it. I'm it's total ADHD in me, you know, like when the pressure is on, I, I perform like, I, 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 I cram for the test kind of thing, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, you come to play like you're, you're good in front of the camera, but you're no different in front of the camera than in real life. I think there are people well, yeah. that really have a difficult time. They get, you know, just shell shock kind of, and they just don't know how to yeah. react. They think too much. They think too much. Just be yourself. It always works. Uh, unless you're like a terrible person. And even then you're, you'll be a villain. It'll be great. Right. Right. But so um, you were talking about Thomas before and how he was such a big personality. I think he still is, but he, obviously we saw him in the arc of his relationship um, with Catherine, how do you think being on television affected them? Um, I mean, Thomas is just a real character. Like, and I still hear hear from people. Like, I mean, you know, he's he's flawed, no doubt. But um, I still hear from people who are like that guy. I mean, you couldn't write that character if you were a writer, and you were like, I'm going to sit down and write this character. You would get laughed out of the writer's room, you know, You're like, no, no, that person doesn't. He's straight out of a Pat Conroy novel, basically. And um, um, I mean, I can't believe that he had two children with Catherine uh, or Catherine had two children with him. Like, it's outrageous. But it just it's kind of like indicative of the fact that our show just sort of is there's always something going on and it just it just continues to live and people love it. Right. Right. Um, okay. We've seen you try on a bunch of different careers throughout your time on the show. Has right. anything stuck or is there something if you weren't on this show that you would be, or even if you were, that you would really love to do? Yes. I've been thinking about this. Um, I want to own a boutique hotel in the Caribbean. <laughs> oh, I do too. Okay. Great. Okay, all right. All right. Let's get, let's do it, Rachel. <laughs> let's do it. I'll find half of it and then you can do the rest. I can, I can manage the whole thing. Remember I was in the hospitality business oh, forever. True. All yeah. right. Well, what a, what a serendipitous. Uh, thing. Yeah. We're, we're a good duo. Yeah. Um, but like for real, like, is that something you would think of doing? Do you want to have a project or what do you think you're going to do with your life? This show can't go on forever. Excuse me? The show can't go on forever. So like what? Uh, no. Um, it's funny. What are you, my mom and dad? <laughs> Sorry. I am a little older. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I um, um, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm, I'm not worried about it even in the least. Um, okay. I, like you said, I'm myself and I've got, and I've got a lot of ideas and a lot of, unfortunately i don't follow through on a lot of my ideas because that's my add working but um i've got a lot of them and so i just i always thought that everything was going to work out and i'm lucky as fuck i get it but um 
something will happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I don't ask you because I'm trying to give you pressure. I'm just curious if there's no, something I mean, that you I'll, that you want to do, I'm, but it does seem like things work out for you. And you you have so many different ideas. It's not like you're going to sit around and do nothing. Um, you know. Well, no, that sounds great. Uh, what I'll do is is I'll the only job we have in this life. The only job, in my little pearl of wisdom, is to keep a smile on your face. Everything else is bullshit. If you're happy, you did life right. I don't give a fuck about, you know, oh, point to this, point to that, keeping up with the Joneses. Fuck the Joneses. I don't want to keep up with them. I don't care about them. I want to keep myself happy. And the things that make me happy are fly fishing, surfing, golf, and hunting. (laughs) And that's the things that make me happy. And I'm going to do those things. Maybe I'll do a show about that. I've, I've pitched it. Well, I've, I've written it up. I've, I've got a lot of ideas. Let's just put it that way. Okay, good. I love that. Um, I think okay. I'd be good on a travel show, don't you? Yeah, I think you'd be great on a travel show. People would want to travel around with you. And yeah, like, you're not tied to anything like a wife or kids. So it's like the perfect time for you to do it. Well, I always loved Anthony Bourdain. <clears throat> Rest in peace. Because, of course, I'm not a chef or anything. And I haven't written an amazing I did write a book. The relation or uh it's called average expectations you should read it um <laughs> but he wrote kitchen confidential was fantastic mm-hmm. and then that show but i really loved his show because he kind of delved into the cultural and historical aspects also while having beautiful meals and drinking nice wine like and i i think i anyway I, i'm not gonna pitch you the show but i think i'd be good at it yeah, no, I think curious. you would be great at something like that. And even if you went to different places as a single guy, um, you know, there you like go. checking yeah. them out. I think that's good. Wait, you just yeah. brought, brought up your book, Average Expectations, Lessons in Lowering the Bar. How did yeah. that even come about? <laughs> um, did you my, write it? Oh, yeah, I wrote every every word of it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I would never not write a book (laughs) that I wrote. (laughs) Yeah, no. Um, So yeah, my agent was like, I was always pontificating and at lunch around 30 rock in New York and, you know, talking about this and I've, I've strong opinions and, um, and a lot of interesting, I think, uh, views about things and um it doesn't always come across on tv but maybe that's not what the show is supposed to be about but um my agent was like you should write a book you should absolutely write a book and and then uh covid happened and i just i went to the mountain into the mountains and wrote a book in three months (laughs) well it's interesting that you say i mean first of all that's amazing congratulations because most people have to get a ghostwriter so i think that's pretty cool but um you know i had very, very cool editor and helper and uh, shout out to Dina. Okay, so let's get into this season for a minute. Um, this whole, the whole arc of the season has really been about this Austin Taylor kiss. The timeline, did it happen? Now we know um, from the last, you know, viewing on Thursday night that the kiss, they did admit to the kiss um, in the teaser coming up for next week. You know, his, Austin's mom asks if they, slept together, you know, whatever. So like the whole thing. I haven't seen that. <laughs> you haven't seen that? Is that what you said? No. I, oh, I, I'm, okay. I think someone just emailed me the, the new episode, but I, um, yeah, I mean, without getting too into it, I mean, I approach, I, I, I know people are going to be like, are already like, you know, you're, do you care? Or you don't seem like you care. Of course I care. I, I never cared about any more, anybody more in my life than Taylor ever. I mean, it's the longest relationship I had. Um, but what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Burn down the house? Like I'm not, that's not who I am. And sort of like my mom used to say, uh, and all our moms used to say, I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which hurts even more. Right. So, right. Oh, that's the worst. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's how I approach it. Now you're going to watch this season and and see different interactions that I maybe don't keep my cool <laughs> all that much. But um, yeah, it's complicated and it's upsetting, no doubt. But I think for someone watching the show, I can tell you that you do look 
upset. You do look like you care. And I think that, um, you know, it comes across, especially, you know, the, on the episode, I think it was the last one where Taylor walks in and sees little Craig. And I feel like that really affected you because it was like your little threesome family was together again. And it looked like, you know, that hit your heart for a second. I mean, yeah, I mean, listen, um, for two and a half years, we slept in the same bed six, you know, almost every night with little Craig. And in the morning, she would wake up and and kiss little Craig on the head and then kiss me on the head and then go go to work. And nobody else knows that in the world, you know, only the three of us. Yeah. <laughs> and something beautiful about that, you know, and I remember all that. And um she is a she loved that dog and and he loved her right back. And mm-hmm. it was oh yeah, of course I got emotional. God, you'd be a monster if you didn't, you know, in my opinion. Right. Well, of course. So what's interesting about this season is I, I feel like, you know, I guess this is the Southern Charm version of Scandaval, but like toned way down to dial maybe two as opposed to 20. Yeah, yeah I've heard that. And, you know, well, y- 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 the, the crazy thing is, is the Scandaval thing happened. Right. In the, what uh, let's call it last winter. And yeah. we had already filmed our the, the season. So. People are like, oh, you guys are copying them. We're like, wait a second. Technically, the shit that happened to us was before that. Like, I mean, technically, forget it. It totally was. Right. So, um, but wow, yeah, that that sort of made headlines, didn't it? Um, well, but didn't you, were you guys nervous with this season coming out that this was going to be such a scandal that they were, no. everyone was going to get shamed and canceled? And I mean, it obviously didn't happen that way. I think the difference as a viewer, is that, um, you know, obviously no one cheated. It was after the fact. But what is very similar to me is that... Well, hey, hold on. Okay, Okay, go ahead. You know, it remains to be seen what Austin and Olivia's relationship was, that status at the time where this all went down. So Okay, true, true. And will that come out on the season? I mean, yeah, Olivia's, I don't think still is, is, is... gotten over it but whatever yeah well there's a there's a lot of reasons for her not to get over it i mean obviously we'll come to find out if there was some cheating going on which it sounds like maybe there was because the timeline textbook austin i mean he he, you know it was one foot in the door you know one foot in one foot out kind of thing and he's um so i never you know i can never describe any of his relationships be it with madison or olivia like it just never it never made sense. And he never like fully jumped in the pool basically. Um, right. So whatever that's, that's for him to to discuss, I suppose. Right, but, right. but yeah, right. Okay. So you're saying it's not like Scandaval or whatever. No, it's not. But, um, and but I the similarities to me is that you guys all date within your pool of friends kind of, and then date someone who your friend, maybe date is a strong word, but you guys are intimate with, um, people that have been recycled with all your friends and with the Vanderpump Rules cl- cast, their thing is that they're cheating. Like everyone is a cheater, but then they all attack the person with you guys. Cheating is like, I don't know what the boundary is. It's a little muddy waters, but it's really for you guys. You date someone who has dated one of your friends. It just seems par for the course. Well, no, it's different. I mean, look, I... um. I started dating Taylor and I, you know, I, I was like, I'm on the TV show and like, I, I really like you, but, and if you don't want any part of it, let me know because like, I can't, I'm not going to like sit here and lie uh, on camera. I'm, that's the big thing. You know, people ask about the show. I, I am doing, I am saying and doing what I would normally say and do and uh, with people I want to do it with. So um, I never want to like, hide what I'm trying to do or or trying to and anything like that. So she agreed to be on the show or, you know, to, to join me and, 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 uh, basically, uh, put our lives on, on camera, which turned out to be, uh, you know, maybe not the best idea, but that's life. Um, and, um, so well, wait on that, on that note, do you think that if you dated off camera, it would have had a different result? 
I don't know. It's a good question. Um, it's a it's a good question. I mean, it's not easy. I'll say that. Be, and the problem is, um, you're dating, right? And and every and the, there's everyone's talking about you, and you can feel that sort of um, examination happening, even though you're not in the room. You know that people are talking about you, and then the show comes out, and you hear different people's opinion. It's just stressful. It's just stress. It, it puts stress on a relationship, not a doubt on the world on that. Right. Right. Um, what do you think is holding you back from settling down? Um, monot the, the monotony. Mm -hmm. I just, that scares the shit out of me. Um, groundhog day. Like I don't want to do groundhog day. I want to be able to do whatever I want all the time but i don't know i mean i kind of had a thing with taylor during covid where i was like this isn't so bad <laughs> so i i had a nice little epiphany and you know we i got as close with her as anybody i ever have so um you know and that's why i value her as a uh and her family and all the people um in her life because it was I consider it a very her a very important part of me, and I always will. And you guys did discuss marriage, right? Did we did? She told me to to uh, go go to hell when I when I proposed. I didn't propose, but I, I was like, "What if we do this?" She's like, "You can't do that. You don't even know what the hell that means." And I was like, "Okay, okay, but but what if I did this?" She's like, oh, I don't know, you know. So I think girls kind of sometimes kind of do that. They kind of like play coy or or just kind of talk shit. <laughs> right, and even though maybe they do want you to propose, maybe but so. they want to see so. what what your reaction is yeah, and push back. Oh, but here we are talking about. It. Let's not talk about it. it it's okay. still yeah. okay. Well, do you think that in your future you want to ever get married and have kids? I want kids. Yes, kids would be great because when you're old and you're like 65 or 70, you you would love to see someone exploring the world um, and kind of making the same mistakes, hopefully not too many that you made and having the same laughs and, and joys and enthusiasms that you can maybe instill in them. And I think that that would be delightful. You just don't feel the need to have a partner to do it with or no, 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 no. I'm not saying that. Um, I, I want, you know, the Warren Beatty, George Clooney and Andy Cohen tracked, <laughs> you know, you wait until, I mean, honestly, I want to like, I've got things I want to do and they're not exactly, um, it's not exactly entails sitting around and watching a baby, um, all, all day and night. I, yeah. uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. And I think that that's totally fair. I think you've always been upfront and honest about who you were and what you wanted. And I think for anyone to get mad that you can't follow through with like a white picket fence and a wedding, they really need to step back because I don't think that that's ever who you represented to be. So, well, you know what they say, misery loves company. So um, people, I think people are generally miserable and they want you to be miserable along with them. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, all right. So I want to get back to a couple of things in, in the most recent episode. What I thought, again, as a, as a viewer, it was a little bit uncomfortable for me watching um, JT and that scene in the bar with you guys, where he was like looking at you and was like, why would you let her go? She, you should marry her. Why didn't you marry her? And then, but at the same time, you know, he, you know, has an issue with like bro code stuff because it was clear that he was either saying he had a crush on her and what she was his ultimate girl. Right. But then got so upset that like this bro code had been broken. Like what was up with JT in that scene? It was really uncomfortable to watch. Yeah, I mean, he brought some different energy, didn't he? Um, and. I mean, he was in love. I think he look, he doesn't know me anything. I, I know JT you know we're not we're not like we play golf and I, I enjoy his company but we're not like tight you know we don't yeah. like go on vacations together so he doesn't owe me 
anything as far as if not, when Taylor and I was breaking up, when we broke up, I had no illusions about the fact that people were going to like her. I mean, she's amazing, you know, for mm -hmm. all the reasons I was in love with her. So um, I don't I, I didn't feel any I mean, like I, I didn't feel anger towards him at all. I, but I, I thought it was funny that she rebuked his advances. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's hilarious. Um, but yeah, and then he he definitely um, poked. He, see, the thing with Austin and Craig and I, like, we're so close and we've known each other. It's hard for us to call each other out because everyone gets defensive because we know too much. Uh, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, it's just, it, it's like a dead end road. Like you just bang your head against the wall, but JT came in and he didn't care. And he had no, he didn't have the past that we had. And he right. came in and shook the tree, so to speak. And, um, so I, I don't know what to think about it other than the fact that, I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe some secrets would still be secrets, uh, if it weren't for JT. Yeah, well, I guess that's true. Um, also, something that came out was that Taylor had sent Whitney one or more naked photos, one in particular that said, come one, come all. I think there was some chatter that because of that quote on it, and then later in the episode, you use that one quote, come one, come all. People were like, what does that mean? What are your thoughts on all that? Um. Look, I know Taylor. She could be quite a little exhibitionist sometimes. Um, so I don't, I don't have any anger. To, I, I know that she and Whitney have a funny relationship. It's, but I know it, it's not romantic. I think she likes to shock sometimes, and uh, that's what she was doing. And I, I also know that she, she like blames Whitney for for any problems we had in our relationship because oh. she. He's a bad influence on me, <laughs> which he made right. very good. Okay. Do you think that's true? No, nobody's an influence on me. I'm my own person. But I, you know, I look at Whitney and I see someone who's lived a wonderful life. I mean, the guys in Saint Tropez, uh, Ibiza, London. I mean, you you name it. He's and uh, he lives a good life, and he and I. I mean, you know, obviously his mother wants a grandchild, but that's about it. You know, like I don't, you know, he's, you'd have to ask him, but he's, he doesn't seem like the marrying type uh, at all. Uh, but he'll tell you that maybe one day, but you know, but you know, and, and, and screw everybody who um, is like, oh, how despicable, despicable, how despicable is a fucking villa in, in Saint Tropez. Um, with eating like pasta with truffles on it, uh, with, you know, beautiful people walking around. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds real despicable. Uh, <laughs> give me the fucking PTA meeting in a dingy fucking gym in uh suburban America. Well, you're, you know, fuck that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I like the center of I get it. I get it. You guys are funny. All right. You mentioned Craig before. Let's talk about your relationship with Craig. It's been really fun to watch your friendship with my boy Brooklyn over all these years. Um, would you ever have believed that he he has become this huge successful business guy? I'm so happy for him. He's he's changed and evolved the most, if you want to know the truth. I mean, when you met him, I mean, he was emaciated. He was, I mean, he'll tell you he was addicted to Adderall. He he didn't eat. And mm -hmm. um he just and his brain was scattered and i've just been very pleased to see his metamorphosis and um i can't i i we're, we've never been closer than right this moment we talk uh we we give each other advice we we like plan stuff we we talk about the stock market i mean it's like real adult conversations and boy when we met each other it was nothing like that you know do you have any of his pillows in your house, which is now an Airbnb? I thought, I think I do. I think I do. Yeah. I mean, he gave me a couple, but I mean, who knows? People probably stole them from my Airbnb. <laughs> right. Well, that's true. I would. Um, what do you think of Craig and Paige's long distance relationship? I like Paige a lot. Um, I don't know. Long distance kind of sounds lovely, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> 
I mean, uh, I don't know. It's a it's a brave new world out there, isn't it, Rachel? Who are you seeing? Nobody. Zero. Do you have anyone for me? Yeah, yeah. I'll set you up. Oh, good. I would love that. Um, our relationship would come full circle. I would really love that. Um, but do you think, I know you like Paige, and I think a lot of people really like Paige, and obviously everybody likes Craig too. Do you think that they will go the the long haul? I mean, they talk a lot in this season about how it almost comes across that Craig is more interested in the, the babies and the marriage, and she's a little more independent. Like, do you think that that will last? <clears throat> well, yeah, I mean, this is kind of, you know, maybe one of the reasons I like her so much. She's like a little bit like a guy, right? Or yeah. a, uh, she's like, no, nah, I got a good thing going. Like, why, why do I want to pump the brakes? She's doing mm-hmm. well professionally. She loves New York City. It's like her place. And she likes the fashion world. Like, why, why, why jump out of that? Craig is pretty traditional, turns out, you know? And um, I think it's funny, that, 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 that dichotomy. Yeah. Well, I think most people really like them together and hopefully that will work out whatever that means for them. That doesn't have to end in marriage, but I think that that um, uh, relationship. I think marriage, are- marriage is a dying uh, institution, Rachel. I think in, in 30 years, if we're around to see it, maybe 40 people are like you're, you were, people got married. How stupid was everybody? Yeah. Like, and that's a testament to uh, like women and their empowerment and their careers and they're like they're kicking that i mean they're smarter than men most of them at least that i've observed and i think it's wonderful and i like why why have why sign a contract i don't know i don't know well i i think that actually is an interesting topic of conversation listen i've been married twice um i was engaged to somebody who was killed like i i've not had a great you know, track record with men. I have a daughter who's 11, who I love. I would love to find a partner and like a witness to my life and someone to share my life with. But does it have to end in marriage? Like the fact that we're talking about this, it's such a good question because it really is making me think like it doesn't affect my commitment. Like I'm monogamous. I I would love to be with just one person, but it does. you're right. Like marriage does not have to be this like thing that like defines who we are. So I think that's an important thing for people to think about. I think so too. I, I I really believe it. Like, um, you know, girls are freezing their eggs and stuff like that. I mean, this is, it's a brave new world and it's not going to change. It's not going to go, <clears throat> no matter how much the GOP wants everything to go back to the 1950s, it's over. The genie is out of the bottle and, and things are changing rapidly and we're going to have to figure it out. Um, and, you know, the traditionalist are going to have clutch their pearls and mm. and holler, but it's over, man. Things are changing. Well, I do also remember I was working at Bloomberg in my 20s, Bloomberg TV, and like all the women were like thinking about when they were going to get proposed to or married because that's when they thought their life would start and they could quit their job. And what I've realized now in my 40s is like, I love having a job. I love having a project. I love having something that makes me stand out and that keeps me financially independent and that I have something to talk about, right? And I think so many women forget that and not all anymore, but like it was a thing that you thought your life started when you were um, in a partnership with someone and you got married and that just is not the way it is anymore or it shouldn't be. I think you're much more valuable as a person when you're, when you have something going on. There is nothing sexier than an independent woman, the, the nothing on her. Yeah. I love that you say that. Cause I, I don't think enough women know that. Um, all right, let's talk about your relationship with Austin right now. How is it? We're good, man. I mean, <clears throat> I certainly, um, <clears throat> You know, was disappointed, as I said earlier, um, and sort of, you know, you learn things about people, um, and you know, hopefully they learn things about themselves and and try to change. Mm-hmm. But we've had a lot of good times together. I'm not gonna, and we continue to. So I'm not gonna. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Uh, what would you do? And my, uh, I mean, I know women are different than men in their relationships, but I'm not gonna what like throw a tantrum or, or never talk to him again. I'm just, that's just not who I am. 
No, and I get that about you too, that I think you really value your relationship with your with your friends. And I, I mean, it's very hard because I do think that, um, you know, yes, there is this code. Same thing that, uh, listen, I get the anger that Oli- that Olivia feels towards Taylor because I think she felt really betrayed with yeah. maybe not even that it happened so much as the lies that went around it and the cover up kind of, it just made it yeah. seem like so much more of a big deal. And for you, like you asked my opinion on how you should handle it. I think a conversation of like, dude, that was the one girl I may have loved. Like that might've been the love of my life, so to speak, because I didn't know anything like that. And that was, you stepped on some boundaries that like really bothered me, but do I think you should end a friendship over it? No. Um, I think that you have a good relationship from what it seems like in the show so far, you are able to still have that love and connection with Taylor. And if you have that love and connection with Austin, he he's kind of a little bit of a Peter Pan. So he might not understand it till he gets older, but he will understand it affects you and will not want to hurt you eventually, you know? Yeah, it's complicated, isn't it? But um, yeah, it is. But you know, you know, it, go ahead. It, it, you know I mean, uh, if he doesn't have the self awareness to know, um, and then he's suffering, I'm sure, on, on a lot of levels while this season unfolds. I, I mean, I can't imagine he gets any much positive feedback out there in the world from fans and whatnot, or or viewers. Yeah. It seems um, like he's taking the brunt of the blame for sure. Right. Women are not liking him. Even men are not liking him, you know? So like, I think he, he'll he definitely, bed, maybe he'll learn a lesson. You make your bed, you got to lay in it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And um, <clears throat> I'm very big on not, I, I would never revel in his misery or even though he did it to himself and I'm involved, you know? Um, <clears throat> you just hope that, you know, you make, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's complicated, isn't it? Well, I know that I have a question because I know this was filmed, you said like a year ago, but how is it watching it back? Like, are you guys all still friendly? Do you talk? Like, are you calling Olivia and being like, oh my God, did you see that episode last night? We talk a little bit. Um, and I'll, <laughs> it's funny. I'll, yeah. Like after a particularly rough episode, like maybe there'll be radio silence, but it doesn't last very long. We've been doing this a lot time you know and i've got a lot of love for everybody and i want to support everybody and so you'll never i'll never ghost you i'll always return your your message and uh, i'll try to give support wherever i can right i love that about you all right um other questions that don't have anything to do with that who's okay have you ever slid into someone's dms (laughs) to get a date Fuck yeah! Are you crazy? What did it ever? You, did it ever yeah. work? No, I'm talking about like a famous person that we would all know, not some girl that you think is hot. I don't know. Look, my DMs are a fucking you know uh, crazy. Um, I don't. I try not to look at them honestly. But you like, mean, you mean messages from women? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, wild. Oh wow. It, I I really try not to look at them, but um. Because it's just silly. But if I'm like bored, <laughs> uh, I'll be like, what is going on here? But um, no, yeah. I mean, you know, in the past, I, I'm sure I have. I'm sure I have. I'm not sure whether what what became of it. I like, I like, I like maybe send an actress a message, but I, I'm pretty, um, I'm not very salacious. So if anything, it was probably like, I really love your work. Um, think you're amazing. Uh, just want to say that you know what right. I mean so, right yeah. it wasn't like I'd love to meet you oh, in between no. and meet you at a hotel room yeah nothing like that no nope. okay boring all right so uh, would we be surprised about anyone who slid into your dms uh yeah you would <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna give me a name or no oh no it's okay. uh, it, it, no, you wouldn't probably know the names but like I don't know. It's pretty well, wild. The only reason I bring this up is because, you know, some of these questions are from people that wanted me to ask you questions, right? Because we all heard that Madison and Alex Rodriguez right. had originally been talking in DMs. And so I was bringing that back yeah, to you. But, no, like um, not some crazy pop star has ever DM'd me, but I, I met some uh, 
an act, a cool actress at a Guns N' Roses concert in LA. And we still stay in touch. We never, nothing's there. Again, I'm pretty benign. I'm like, I'm just, a, I'm not trying to be, and I certainly don't want to be in the news cycle. Like, I don't want, I, it's horrifying to me to have like, <laughs> I'm sorry, look who I'm talking to, to be on the front page of magazines and stuff. Yeah, I don't want that. I don't, that, again, that's not what I want. Um, and, you know, some people, you know, say any press is good press. I, well, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that either. So we're on the same page there. Um, Speaking of the Madison thing, when that was all going down, what did you think of that? Oh, my God. That was crazy. I mean, I wasn't. She's she's something else. And she but. um, Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You know, it was on the like when that was unfolding in real time. Were you guys all aware of it? Was she telling you guys all about it? She told some people about it. I didn't. I didn't know what to believe, and I don't. And I really don't care. I mean, um, right. But I thought it was funny, like how it all unfolded, and it it was a story, wasn't it? I mean, um, so oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't even know what what anyone thought about it, but I don't really care, honestly. Okay. Um, are you looking forward to BravoCon? Yes, of course. Is there Every- anyone you're interested oh, in meeting? No. Everybody is so nice. I mean, Rachel, it's, you feel the love like none other. It's so, it's like affirmation on, on, you know, spiked in your veins, honestly. Yeah. It's so cool. Um, everybody's so supportive and happy to meet you. And you're, you feel like a uh, you're a beetle. Uh, <laughs> you got a hard day's night or something. Mm-hmm. It's that easy. So, um, I can't wait to see everybody and and mingle and stuff. Um, is there anybody I want to meet at Bravo? No, I think I know everybody at this point. Um, but you know, everybody has their own deal. You know, that's it's funny. Craig and I were talking about BravoCon because it's going to be Paige's birthday there, one of the nights. And I was like, I was like, well, let's let's go out. And I was like, who should we invite? He's like, that's the thing. Isn't it weird? Like everybody has their own deal. You know, we all have our deal, our own preferences, our own um, little stigmatisms and whatnot. And um, so who knows who will show up to that party, but I'm going to have fun with Paige and Craig. That's for sure. Okay, good. It's in Vegas this year, right? Yeah, fucking Vegas. Don't get me started. Well, which reminds me afterwards, I'm going to text you. I have, you know, I used to live there and work there. So I know everyone there. So if you guys want to be hooked up at a restaurant, anything you want, I'll give you all those people's numbers. Oh, cool. Go away. We've got our friend at, at the towel group. Who's, oh, Mike? Who's, um, no, Rich Thomas. Oh yeah, of course. Okay. Rich is a good friend. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. So I used to work with Rich. I like Rich. Um, okay. So obviously people have been talking about how you have been DMing with Bryn. She was just on watch what happens live and said that maybe you said that, I don't know, by the way, you guys haven't switched to text at this point. Why are you still DMing? We're not DMing uh, at all. Like she said what she said and I thought it was funny and everybody sent it to me and she was very, you know, sweet and and all that. And I just sent her a, a nice message again. I, I'm sorry. I wish I I wish I was more scandalous, but I was like, thank you for your kind words. Like, look forward to meeting you in Las Vegas. Um, and then she was like, cool, cool. Uh, if you're ever in New York, let me know. I was like, you know, I was like, where do you live in New York? She's like, you know, West Village. I was like, oh, I love the West. You know, it was it was just completely. I am not. So I it wasn't like I can't wait to ravage you in no, Las Vegas. No, I would, never, <laughs> I, I would never type that. That's that's tacky in my opinion. Yeah. No, I get it. Okay. Um, Unless I was asking someone. Say that again? Unless I was like with somebody and like, you know, we were being naughty, whatever. But like, I say that to someone I've never even shook hands with. (laughs) Right. No, I get it. I get it. Okay. So we've heard recently that Taylor is dating someone. She's been dating a guy for around a year. His name is Gaston. Do you know him? I don't know him. He's roommates. Is that a real thing that she's dating someone named Gaston? That's such a rare name. I, I wish her all the best. Um, you know, I'm still, I'm still tight with her, her, uh, family, her sister, her mom and dad. So, um, 
But you don't talk to her? I do talk to her. I talk to her a lot, um, uh, quite regularly. So we don't talk about her relationship. I don't really care. I mean, I, I want her to be happy. That's it. That's it. And I'll be um, available if she ever needs anything for the rest of my life. Hmm. Okay. I love that. Um, are you dating anyone right now? Doesn't sound like it, but. Um, <clears throat> no, nothing serious. I mean, but I have a few people I get excited about, you know, if I see a text or maybe try to plan a meeting or something like that. Oh, okay. I love that. All right. Well, good luck. With I that. love, I love, I really, <clears throat> I just, I just like meeting new people. I really do. It's not about promis- promiscuity necessarily. <laughs> um, I just love being able to like meet somebody. Now they could end up being a total, uh, you know, disaster, but like, I, I just love the process. I'm a, I'm a social animal and um, it gets me into trouble if I'm in a relationship because, you know, <laughs> it just, it doesn't look good. And sometimes it can lead to things you don't want to do, um, and th- you know, or you shouldn't do. Um, mm-hmm. But I enjoy being um, able to not answer to anybody. It's, it's a wonderful feeling for me personally at the moment. Yeah, no, I get it. I understand that. All right. So what can people expect from either something going on the rest of the season? I know you can't give any, you know, spoilers, but um, what, what can people expect? Is it just more of, was it more than a kiss? Put, should we be mad? Who's speaking to who? Is that kind of the rest of the season? I can't tell you. I don't know. I, what am I? I'm just, um, I'm a fan just like you, Rachel. Oh, I love that. Okay, well, where can people find you? What can people expect to see you doing next? Um, good question. I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm a relationship on Instagram. Um, okay. I've got winner. Um, for the time being, I'm just like, oh, what a wasteland. And um, I'm, I'm happier because of it. Um, I'm going to keep doing stand-up comedy. I've done stand-up. Did you know that? I did not know that. How's that going? It went great. I, I did three. I did a, uh, Charlotte, Raleigh, and, and Atlanta. And, Wait, uh, with just like regular co- uh, comedians? You just were put in the set? I did an hour. What? Off the top of my head. I mean, I, I wrote down some things, of course. And I had like note cards that I put on the stage or whatever that I could do a glance at. But I, I did. I, of like, I, of like topics to follow? Yeah, it was different. Yeah. I really and, liked it. And that it went well? Was, yeah, I thought so. I thought so. My brother and sister came in Charlotte. And, and I, I, oh, what a good feeling. I came off the stage and my brother gave me like the biggest hug he's ever given me. He was like, I'm so proud of you. And, Oh, that's so nice, Shep. Did anyone from the show come and see you? No, of course not. <laughs> but but here's the thing. Craig and Austin are doing their little, you know, podcast. They do it live sometimes. And we're gonna start, I'm gonna start doing stand-up and then they're they're gonna do their thing and then we're all gonna come on stage. So that's something to look forward to. I think I that's a great it. idea. Yeah, me too. And um I'm going to keep writing and I'm going to keep um, doing the things that make me happy. I don't know what they they are, but like, I don't even know. My life is planned at the moment up to December 16th weekend. After that, I have no plan. And that's how I like it. <laughs> well, maybe that's the next like book, something like flying by the seat of your pants or whatever, maybe. and how to live life, you know, just pushing through and without any plan and see where it takes you. Yeah, no, I wanted to name my original book. You can't lasso a zebra. And uh, that's what maybe I'll call the next one. Okay. Well, I look forward to reading that and I'm so happy we reconnected and um, yeah, uh, we're going to text after this and you're going to set me up with some lovely Southern gentlemen um, and we'll see where that goes. (laughs) Okay. You got a plan. Okay. Shep, you are the best. I wish you the best. I think you're doing so great. I'm really proud of you. And um, I love you. I think you're terrific. So good luck with the rest of the season and good luck with all things you do in the future. I appreciate you. Thank you, Rachel.
Thank you so much for listening to Misunderstood. I'm your host, Rachel Yucatel. Please be sure to subscribe to the show and give us a five-star rating and review. You can support the show by joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash misunderstood with Rachel Yucatel. Do you have ideas for the show or want to reach out? Email us at info misunderstood podcast at gmail.com. That's spelled M-I-S-S understood. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Misunderstood.